morning, good afternoon, good evening, y'all. How you doing, family? What's going on with y'all? I hope everything is okay. Hope y'all staying healthy, staying out of this corona virus uh, stuff. Not listening to people who are telling you that this shit is a hoax. Um, because, again, it's not my uh, friend. Uh, all of her um, partners, relatives came down with COVID. And miraculously, probably because she's so phys- physical, uh, miraculously, I'm surprised that my friend didn't have any symptoms and she, you know, wasn't apt, apt, wasn't really around her neck, you know, because she had just had knee surgery. Um, but she's still open. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, the person was bringing them food and things of that nature. So, you know, they still put themselves kind of like in harm's way, you know. Um, but the good thing about it is there was no There was no uh, uh, positive result for her. So that's a good thing. So I'm hoping that all of y'all are being safe out there. I know that I have uh, subs out there who are struggling with the um, challenge of having parents and elderly parents like I. In fact, one of my subs um, has a father that is... Matter of fact, I should have had your name before I even um, start talking about this. But I hope your dad is doing okay. I'm going through a lot of stuff right now with my dad. And, um, and a lot of y'all know I just um, had to learn a very valuable lesson about forgiveness because I hadn't talked with my father in over 30 years. And while there are some people who may say, uh, why are you? Um, At the end of the day, it is the lesson that um, in this for me, that I'm the one that's standing up being counted when my father needs somebody most. So I'm dealing with that. And so I'm hoping that you're doing okay over there dealing with your father and everything that you're going through. And hope that, you know, just all y'all are staying safe. Taking care of yourselves, your family members, and that they are safe. I'm praying for y'all all and for y'all health and wealth. Okay? So, with that being said, let me get to the real uh, reason I want to make this uh, video. And this is something that I thought y'all might find very interesting when it comes to your boy. John Nagel, a retired Army officer, and Paul Yingling, a retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel, penned an open letter to Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff General Mark Milley, warning him that President Donald Trump might refuse to leave office in November and that the U.S. military must be prepared to remove him. And because it's 83 days till the election, you know, these retired um, vets just want to make sure that these dudes know where their loyalty lies. Um, And so they decided to, you know, pin this letter and say, look, um, you know what's supposed to happen. They said the once unthinkable scenario of authoritarian rule in the United States is now a very real possibility. Y'all hear what I said to you? Like the video I did back when he won, I said, he got the codes, y'all. He got the codes. And everybody is, is just thinking about be, you know being prepared to allow Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and um, take this transition and yeah there's some concern about how smooth it's going to be 
I'm even more concerned with the when he loses to the election, the days following that up until the day that he really supposed to transfer the power. That's what he's going to Y'all think he done did a lot of stuff. Man, oh my God. That's when he's going to go totally, absolutely ballistic. And so we need to be prepared, family. We need to be prepared. Um, that is such a... Uh, real reality at this point. Um, and like I said, the dude got the codes. So what could be worse? He has the codes and he's crazy. The president of the United States is actively subverting our electoral system, threatening to remain in office in defiance of our constitution. In a few months time, you may have to choose between defying defy a lawless president or betraying your constitutional oath. Let me repeat that. The president of the United States is actively subverting our electoral system. He's threatening to remain in office in defiance of our constitution. In a few months' time, you may have to choose between defying a lawless president or betraying your constitutional oath. Y'all know y'all got to leave some comments below because most of y'all comments be very interesting. Mr. Lou, I must have ran you off. Uh, that's all right. It's my house. And you're going to come in here and you going to be respectful. You can stay. Um, but I kind of miss our debates back and forth. It must have got too hot for you. Um, but I can't apologize. I can just say, oh well. Um, sorry if you were offended. Um, if Donald Trump refuses to leave office at the expiration of his constitutional term, the United States military must remove him by force. And you must give that order. I'm going to repeat that shit again for you too. If Donald Trump refuses to leave office at the expiration of his constitutional term, then the United States military must remove him by force. They must remove him by force, and you must give that order. This is what John Nall and Paul Yingley is uh, saying in an open letter to the head of Joint Chiefs of Staff about this crazy uh, man that we have in office, and in 83 days, you know, we don't know what he's going to do, but from this, if, if you are proactive as opposed to reactive, then you should see the hand right on the wall. You should smell a stench in the air of something coming down the pipe. You know? And we've been, I've been saying this for the last, what, year? I've been saying this for the last year. Go back and look at some of my old videos. You can smell it. If you're really in tune to what's going on in the universe, you can feel something. It couldn't go on. We was on a tightrope. But there's a whole lot of y'all out there that knew it too because you, you shared your feelings with me. You said, uh-uh. Especially y'all older people. Y'all was like, uh-uh. Something's happening. You're trying to tell your kids or your grandkids, hey, y'all, pull shit together. Get y'all houses right because there's something coming down on the pipe. No, I don't know what it is. But it's something. And Lord have mercy. I didn't never know. Once Kobe Bryant killed, got killed in that plane crash, it was like he set it off. No disrespect to Kobe and Gianna. Y'all just set that hurt. That that whole thing, it just set everything off. Trump has engaged in a systemic disinformation campaign to undermine public confidence in our elections. That's what he's done. I mean, he has falsely claimed that mail and voting is inaccurate. And it's fraudulent. And I'm telling y'all that it's not. Because I worked the polls 
all the time. I've been an election inspector. I listen. There's a lot that goes into, and it's a very important job. And most of us who have worked the polls take that shit serious. If nobody else did, we took it serious, and we take it serious. And we realize on that day that we are the most important people in these United States of America. People that work the polls. Um, the police don't even have authority to come in there and tell us what to do. We are protected. Being an election and a poll worker, uh, contrary to what a lot of y'all think, is a very special uh, agent come election day. And to be hurt and to be attacked or do anything, you're looking at a felony, man. You're looking at a serious felony to distort, to distract, to uh, manipulate or hurt a poll worker. Okay, so let's just get that, you know. And because he's 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 uh, engaged in this disinformation campaign, you got people now worrying about every damn thing. And I'm trying to explain saying this is what it happens. And a lot of y'all know when you live with narcissists, this is what they do. This is what they do. And because this is, you know, because we're so used to being um, dealing with this kind of toxic behavior, whether it's from people in our family, politicians, that when somebody takes it and, and you get ripe, ripe, Right. When somebody take it and just stretch that rubber band real, you get to the point where you're, you're abused and you're acting and re responding like an abused person. I mean, we don't call all those lies out. Every time he lies and he's sitting there in that Oval Office or having a press conference and y'all know he's lying, then y'all should start taking your power back. Doing something that remotely reflects that this is a lie and we're calling this out, even if it means all y'all get up and walk out. You have to be willing. You have to be willing. I ain't even talking about whether you should vote or not, and if you don't, in reparations. Oh, forget all that shit. You know, because if we don't got no country, we don't got to worry about none of that. Okay? We don't worry about none of that. So to me, this is not this is me speaking in my opinion I think it's um uh, uh, very important that people that suffer from um anxiety and other kind of mental health issues emotional issues that we don't have to put up with Donald Trump another four years because the majority of us think or some of us think that we should just not vote at all I, I don't even got time for that and that is ridiculous. Or how we should vote. You, you get what I'm saying? My position is whoever you put in there, you got to hold their feet to the fire. If you're not willing to do that, ain't no sense of trying to do it on the front end. Right now, when the country is going down the drain, you know, somebody say, yeah, let them go around. Yeah, but a lot of them ain't got kids and grandkids and shit like that. So I speak from the position of hope. And that I want a future for my babies. Not like this. But if you fight a certain way. And you keep your eye on the prize. You will get there. Okay. So. You got to realize that he's. Trump is actively sabotaging the U.S. Postal Service. He's doing that in an effort to delay and discredit these mail-in votes. He has suggested delaying the 2020 election despite lacking the authority to do so. This is what we have uh, already. This is the handwriting on the wall. This is the handwriting on the wall. Now, who is going to act shocked when this is what happened? It should be none of us because he already telling us what time it is with him. He's already telling us you cannot bring a knife to a gunfight. You can't do it. It does not work. 
you have to be able to punch and you have to be able to get out the way. You got to duck. You got to throw straight right hands, right crosses, uppercuts, and straight right hands. And left hooks. You can't be afraid to throw punches um, with somebody like Donald Trump and to get him out of here because this is, game has been going on too long. Trump is a, in, and I, w- I want y'all to know something because this is, um, this is the most important thing that I got out of this article about well, from John Now and Paul Yingling, these retired um, ranking officials. And I'm sure y'all all know this because we discussed this as well. And I want to know seriously what y'all think about this. Because right now we have to really, really be putting ourselves in defensive. We all, black people, ain't nothing new for us. Ain't nothing new. We always in defensive mode, right? But this time it's going to be a little offense with it. And be prepared for that. Be prepared to, you know, strike first sometimes. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But that's enough of that. Trump is assembling a private army capable of thwarting not only the will of the electorate, but also the capacities of ordinary law what I said? Trump is assembling a private army capable of working not only the will of the electorate, of the electorate, I'm sorry, but also the capacities of ordinary law enforcement. When these forces collide on January 20th, 2021, the U.S. military will be the only institution capable of upholding our constitutional order. That would be it. He always talked about his little biker boys and his deputized white supremacists and um, what they're capable of how many people he got he can stand on Fifth Avenue and shoot us down and nobody would do anything. Well, I'm here to say there's a lot of us that know how to fight. Because we've been fighting a long time. And what you don't want is that sleeping giant to wait. Whether it's black or white, it doesn't really matter. But more specific specifically, you don't want to wake up this you don't woke up a war in class already. Because we already see what time it is. So the thing for us, and I say for all like-minded people, and I speak direct to us because we're the one being shot down and killed and hunted down like dogs in the street. So we got to have somewhat of a strategy and we have to have some way of knowing we got to defend ourselves because nobody else is going to help us. Nobody. But the God in you. That's, that's the only thing. Just you and God. Okay, you can't listen to none of these people telling you what to do or telling these people telling you how you should emote your pain and none of that. Stay focused and keep your eye on the prize. And just understand that Trump is assembling a private army of cap- capable of thwarting uh, not only the will of the electorate, but also the capacities of the law, ordinary law enforcement. So your police, all them ain't gonna be, they, they're not going to be affected. When these forces collide on January 20th, 2021, the U.S. military will be the only institution capable of holding, upholding our constitutional order. And you heard it. You heard it, you heard it, you heard it. Okay? Now, so, I want to know what y'all think about this. What y'all... What are y'all doing? What are some of y'all thinking about, you know, if he doesn't leave? What are you prepared to do? And I ain't saying you got to just, I ain't asking you to just be like, boom, boom, you know, everything. But kind of let me know, what are your, what is your thought process on this? And can you feel something like this beginning to happen in America? Because I contend that nobody wins in war. Nobody. A lot of y'all get mad at me when I say that. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to be some casualties and all that. You're going to be some feel-good moments. But 
when this what what Tamar said. When the smoke clears, we dry our tears. Right? When the smoke clears, who really won? If you value life. You know? So, with that being said, I'm always going to speak like an artist. Because that's what I am. And I'm going to try to keep it as real as possible with that. Okay, so I'm going to go and I want y'all to let that sizzle in the spirits for a minute and leave your comments below. Tell me what you think about this. All right, and I'll see you in the next video.